What's going on guys, it's me, Jimlider Fan 2016 here, and today, we have another flight report for you guys. I hope you guys are excited for today's video, so without being said, let's get started. Welcome to San Francisco International Airport. It has been a long time since I last went to SFO for a trip. The last time that happened was back in 2019, so that's about 4 years ever since this recording. But the reason why I'm here is because I'll be traveling to Asia for an awesome family trip. And I'm just super excited to be part of this awesome adventure. Today I'll be flying with Eva Air from San Francisco International Airport to Taipei's Taiwan International Airport. The flight time will be 13 hours and 15 minutes. Super excited to travel internationally again. It's been 4 years since I last flew out of the country, and I'm just excited to experience what flying internationally is like in 2023. So why don't we check in some bags, and head down to security to begin this long haul journey. Given the fact it was a holiday, security wasn't that packed. Still, going through TSA screening was as simple as it gets. Now when you're traveling outside of the United States, one major difference from domestic traveling is the requirement of a passport or proper visa documentation. It's important to have these documents with you when you arrive at your destination airport. This allows you to enter that specific country if you pass through customs. Welcome to Gate Alpha 9. We'll be waiting at this gate for a couple of minutes before the boarding process begins. But docked up at that gate is a very special aircraft. Let's take a look at the details of the aircraft I'll be flying today. Super fortunate about this flight. Today, I'll be flying my first special livery aircraft. After many previous flights I've been taking for the past years, I have no words on what to say about this. Being able to fly one of the two special liveries on EVA's 777-300ER fleet was a stroke of luck. I can't believe this is happening, and I'm just beyond excited to hop on board this aircraft to kick off this awesome international trip. While waiting, I decided to grab a small snack before we boarded the plane. SFO has dozens of food vendors that many passengers can grab before their flights. The sandwich I got tasted delicious. In addition, I was able to do an Instagram live stream before my flight. It was something I'd never done before, but I'm glad I made that happen. It was fun interacting with everyone in the live chat, and I hope I can do this again, hopefully soon. But as Zone 2 was soon about to be called out, it's time for the boarding process to begin. Boarding began at 12.33 p.m., and since we are Zone 2, we were one of the first passengers to board the aircraft. I'll show you my seat once I get settled, but without further delay, let's board my aircraft for the long-haul journey to Asia. Here we go, boys. I'm ready. I'm ready to step inside the Star Alliance EVA Air Boeing 777-300ER, walking into these jet bridges. Oh boy, this is gonna be very exciting right here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh man, super exciting. <laughs> I'm going to 
Welcome to seat 67A, a nice seat in the economy row, a lot of amenities you'll find on an international flight, and how about that amazing window view showing off that 777 wing. Let's have a look at the seat back items that are found in the seat pocket. You'll first find a safety card to the 777-300ER, a very well designed safety card with all the safety features labeled in the English and Taiwanese language. The illustrations of the people look very nice. Next up we have the 6 slash disposal bag. Always comes in handy when you need it. Nice that they added some detail to it. And here's the Eva Air Sky Shop card. It's cool that they added this if ever you decide to purchase some items while on flight. The steps on how to shop on that website is well illustrated. In addition, there's also a pair of earbuds and hand sanitizing wipes which are present at your seat. Nice that they also included these in your seat instead of handing it out to you. I'll go over the sound quality for the earbuds later. The legroom on these economy seats are excellent. They provide 30 inches of pitch along with 18.3 inches in width. There's plenty of room to move my legs. Even my personal item, which is a backpack, can fit perfectly. So great work keep it air on this amount of legroom. And since I'm on board a long haul flight, a blanket and pillow is also provided on the seat. Just like all international flights, they're there if you need some sleep during the flight. I love the design of both of these amenities. Love to see this effort from them. And here's the Passenger Service Unit or PSU. Unlike the features that are found on some nearby planes, there are no personal air vents. It's just the reading lamp and the flight attendant call light that is featured. I'll go over how to use a flight attendant call light while on flight. Another thing I do like about these economy seats is the headrest cover. While nothing too much to go into, I like how they added that just to make your seat look presentable. Eva has 3 different seating configurations with 3 seating classes on their 777-300ER fleet. They're mainly deployed on many of their North American and European destinations. Aircraft, which is classified as a 77M, the most common seating arrangement, has a total of 323 seats consisting of 38 Royal Royal Business Class seats arranged in a 1 to 1 configuration, 64 Premium Economy seats arranged in a 242 configuration, and 221 Economy seats arranged in a 333 configuration. Outside the 77M, the 77A has a total of 333 seats, and the 77B has a total of 353 seats. Both of them also consist of a 3 class seating layout. As for the weather, we should have some good winds prior to our departure. As shown on the METAR for July 4th, 2023, the winds are 3 to 0 degrees at 10 knots, along with clear visibility. And while temperatures outside is 90 degrees Celsius with a dew point of 12 degrees Celsius, we do have a few clouds at 600 feet AGL. This is due to the fog that is rolling into the San Francisco Bay Area. But on the bright side, our departure out of SFO should be smooth, and I'm excited to go back to doing long-haul trans-Pacific flights once again.
and let's push back out of Gate Alpha 9. Pushback began at 1.03 p.m., just on time before we start heading out to the runway for our departure. We'll be using runway 28 left for our departure. We'll be crossing taxiways Mike 1, Alpha, Lima, and Foxtrot. We will then fly over the Pacific Ocean as we cross 8 time zones. In addition, our aircraft will be flying over Japan prior to our descent into Taiwan. And here we go with our takeoff on runway 28 left. I gotta love this takeoff right here. The GE90 spool up was amazing, and the rest of this takeoff can explain for itself. Make sure to stay tuned for the in flight videos as those will be coming out very soon. 
EVA 007 heavy, wind 29016, remain 28 left, serve with takeoff. Left, And let's climb to our cruising altitude of flight level 340. Before the in-flight service begins, let's have a look at the in-flight Wi-Fi. Eva Air has a wide variety of options when using the in-flight Wi-Fi system. You can download some e-magazines, so you can read them on your computer or tablet. But if you want to connect to the internet while in flight, then you can browse their Wi-Fi data packages. Depending on what plan you want to use, the price can range from $5 to $40. The lowest price only offers texting, while the higher price offers full media streaming for the entire flight. Next up we have the tray table, a unique layout for this one, as you can have it fully open or half open. I like this kind of mechanism on these tray tables. In addition, you can adjust it to have it closer or farther from you. There's also enough room to place your tablet or laptop. I think the tray tables on these economy seats are well designed and I'm overall pleased with this offering. Here's our in-flight entertainment screen. Also known as the Star Gallery, their IFE system is truly state of the art. You start off by selecting the language of your choice, those being English, Taiwanese, Chinese, and Japanese. Once at the main menu, you can select a good number of categories to choose from. Everything from movies, music, games, and a kids section. Let's have a look at the movie section. As you can see, even the movie section are separated into categories, which I think is an A plus for any IFE system I come across. Eva Air offers a good amount of Asian and international movies to choose from, including some new releases too. Here we have the music tab. Similar to the movies tab I showed earlier, they do offer a good amount of international and Asian music that you can listen to, including some EVA classics. The games tab also features a wide variety of games to play during the flight. And now for every Ape Geek's favorite feature, the in-flight map. While it is a simple design, I do like how they display the local time at the origin airport we took off from, as well as the local time at the destination airport. In addition, they also display the ground speed, altitude, and temperature. In addition, there's also a Discover Eva Air tab at the other side of the page of the IFE screen. 
In this tab, you can listen to videos to learn about the airline itself and their regional airline, Uni Air. Both videos can be played in English and Chinese. The extra features include a flight attendant and reading light control panel, and a tools tab. Before the in-flight meal service begins, flight attendants hand out a small snack, almost like the appetizer before the main course. They handed out a small bag of mixed nuts and rice crackers and a cup of water. I think this kind of catering is excellent. I've never seen many international airlines hand out a small snack before the meal service. Great work Eva on doing this kind of catering. And here's the in-flight meal. I had to choose between chicken potatoes or beef noodles. I ended up going for the chicken potatoes for this first meal service. And I gotta say, the way it's prepared is outstanding. The meal includes a bowl of various fruits and vegetables, which they do taste good. I also had a Coke as my drink of choice. In addition, they also provide a piece of bread with some butter. It never gets old eating some bread with my in-flight meal. And here is the main course itself. This is well prepared. From the sauce on the chicken and potatoes, to all the various vegetables, it does feel like a 5-star meal. And for the dessert, a simple piece of tiramisu cheesecake. But what really stands out to the in-flight meal itself, is the addition to actual silverware. Now that's something I've never seen an airline do, so how about that from Eva Air? Overall, the first in-flight meal was absolutely delicious. Once again, you do get a nice variety of fruits and vegetables, and the main course is just really good. It just tasted really good. Nice work Eva Air for another outstanding passenger service. Let's have a look at the lavatory of the aircraft, shall we? And here we go with a loo review. To all of you Noel Phillips fans, you know what I'm talking about. And to my surprise, this lavatory looks amazing. There's a lot of head clearance from the ceiling, and there's a lot of space to move around too. One of my favorite features inside this lavatory are these flowers. It does provide some liveliness inside, which I absolutely like how Eva was able to include that. I sure love the addition to flowers on some cabins. As for the rest, you got the sink, trash bin, paper towel and tissue holder, and cup holder. You also got some toothbrushes to use if ever you're about to start your day. You also have all the various hand soaps, lotions, and hand sanitizers to keep your hands clean and smooth. Going back to the sink, it features a drain plug and an adjuster if ever you prefer your water to be hot or cold. And as I turn to the side mirror, how about a nice way to all of you guys watching? One thing I found unique about the sink is it automatically turns on if you place your hand underneath it. This is a really cool mechanism that is featured, so that's something new for me. The cabin lights were turned off during this portion of the cruise, but flight attendants handed out another snack, which are some cheddar crackers. Again, the crew did an excellent job on catering their passengers, and this is no exception. The crackers taste good though. As previously mentioned on the Wi-Fi data package, the price can range from $5 to $40. I was thinking in my head on what products I have never tried during my past flights, and one of them is the Wi-Fi streaming. Well, for the first time ever, I was able to purchase a Wi-Fi data package on board a flight. I went for the $15 one, which gave me 100 megabytes of Wi-Fi data, and lo and behold, I have fast streaming Wi-Fi on my flight. I was able to access some websites like Jet Photos and Flight Radar 24, and both of those sites were working fine. Plus, 
I was even able to track my flight while at 34,000 feet. I tried using other apps like Instagram and YouTube, but it took a while before those websites were able to pop up. Still, I think the Wi-Fi offering is good, and I'm glad to try it out for the first time. Now in terms of the earbuds that you saw earlier, the sound quality is excellent. It's also noise cancelling too, as if all that I'm hearing is what's playing on my IFE screen. Gotta love the great amenities the airline has to offer right here. Another solid work from Eva Air. The camera lights begin to illuminate as soon as we flew over Osaka, which means the second service should start soon. And just like that, flight attendants came down with catering carts, so it's time for the second meal service to begin. Let's have a look at what I picked. And here's the second in-flight meal. I had to choose between pork kanji or seafood pasta. I went for the pork kanji. As you can see, the main course is well prepared just like the previous one. While the preparation of the pork looks okay, I do love the addition of green onions. The sides include a salad and fruit bowl, both of them taste good by the way, and it's nice to have some healthy options in my meal. Also similar to the previous one, you get your bread and butter. No need to explain more about that one, it's a nice appetizer. What's different from this meal however is the addition to fish floss, which is basically fried minced fish. I tried eating them, but it was best to put them in the kanji instead, and as for my drink of choice, a cup of orange juice. Overall, I think this in-flight meal was good. While not as tasty as the first one, I still think Eva did another great job for the second course. So overall, I really like the in-flight meals on economy class. But as I look outside my window, we're soon about to begin our descent into Taiwan. Super excited to explore a new country as cities like Taipei have some very nice places you can visit. But I do have a layover at Taiwan airport, so I'm excited to explore that airport once I arrive. Looking at the METAR report for TPE, we should expect some winds of 240 degrees at 13 knots, clear skies, and a few clouds at 2,000 feet, and scattered clouds at 20,000 feet. Temperature outside is 30 degrees Celsius, which should be good for our arrival, and our dew point is 34 degrees Celsius. Also, Walt said it was issued on the fourth day of the month in Zulu time, it's actually the fifth day of the month in Taiwan. Our descent began at 4.19 p.m. China Standard Time or CST. As we descend, our approach into Taipei, Taiwan would take us straight into the approach for runway 2 to left. We would make a few turns over the East China Sea before we fly over the countryside and the Tamsui and Bali districts. It was a very cool approach to finish off this long haul journey, and I'm super excited to touch down in Taipei for the very first time. So without further delay, let's begin our descent into Taipei's Taiwan International Airport. Enjoy this landing everybody!
Welcome to Taipei Taiwan International Airport. No words can describe how excited I am to explore a new airport outside the US, and while the landing is, well, in my opinion, rather hard, I'm just glad it wasn't too hard for a landing like that. But with that out of the way, let's get my overall review for this flight. To begin, the number of amenities were excellent for an international flight. I think Eva did a solid job on providing a handful of items during this long haul flight. So we're starting things off with a 10 out of 10 for the amenities. The flight crew went above and beyond for this flight. They know how they cater their passengers in style, and I really love how they interacted with them too, including myself. How about a solid 10 out of 10 for the flight crew? No need to explain more about the legroom. It was spacious enough to fit my backpack in there, so the legroom will also receive a 10 out of 10. The in-flight Wi-Fi was good. Why I love the addition of purchasing one of their data packages. Some websites take a long time to even load, sometimes it doesn't pop up at all, but I still love what they have to offer for their Wi-Fi network, so the in-flight Wi-Fi category will receive an 8.5 out of 10. But in terms of their in-flight entertainment system, it's truly state-of-the-art. It was easy to find what I'm looking for, and the overall varieties are excellent for this flight. How about a 10 out of 10 for the IFB? The in-flight meal was also excellent. They did a great job on the preparation of each meal. And while the second meal service didn't exceed my expectations unlike the first, I still love how each meal course has its own taste. So the in-flight meal will receive a 9.5 out of 10. As for the cabin itself, 
It's spot on. The cabin on these triple sevens are outstanding. I do believe they did a wonderful job on keeping these cabins clean and welcoming for passengers who are on board this flight. So that category will receive a 10 out of 10. We had a bit of a bumpy ride across the Pacific Ocean due to some turbulent air, but the rest of the flight was smooth as soon as we reached Asia. I can agree that this kind of flight service is perfect for an international long-haul flight. It's usually like this for most Asian carriers, but there's a selection of other international airlines from other continents too. And to round it all off, I'm very fortunate enough to fly on my first special livery aircraft, and it was absolutely awesome. The EVA Air Star Alliance livery on the Boeing 777-300DR registered Bravo 16715 will be a special aircraft for me for many years to come. Now with those reviews out of the way, it's time for me to give the total score for this flight. In all honesty, this has got to be one of my favorite flights I've been on in 2023, and I'm glad we're kicking off this summer Asia trip with a banger right here. In addition to the outstanding service, this demonstrates how EVA Air is considered to be a 5-star airline on Skytrax, and I'm glad to experience that for myself. So, for my flight from San Francisco International Airport to Taipei's Taiwan International Airport with EVA Air, the total rating for this flight report is a 9.6 out of 10. Now that's an excellent score to kick off this trip.
Thank you so much for watching this video. In summary, this was a very awesome flight I've ever been on. From flying my first special to experiencing the hospitality Eva Air provides, I'm glad to fly on board one of the best airlines in the world. One of my favorite moments from that flight was the breathtaking scenery when we landed at Taipei. I sure liked that with the weather since it was sunny on that day. I sure gotta love the Eva Air flight crew. Once again, they know what to do when they serve their passengers, and the service was also great too. As for my stay at Taiwan, I only have 2 hours to explore this airport, so I'm excited to see the full infrastructure of the building as well as Terminal 2 once I get settled. Make sure to stay tuned for the Taiwan Airport layover vlog coming soon. I'll be going over on what I did during the 2 hour duration of my stay. But to give you my final words for this flight, I would highly recommend flying with this airline if you want to take a vacation to Taiwan. If you want to experience a great hospitality and excellent service, then Eva Air has got you covered. So, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, and turn on that post notification bell so you won't miss a video like this anytime soon. And if you want to see all my flight reports, then you can click on that playlist, and you can see all my flight reports I did on this channel. I make a lot of these flight reports, and they do get a lot of views. And stay tuned for upcoming content from my 2023 Philippine summer trip. I got a lot of videos to make from flight reports, plane spottings, and a whole lot more, so those are going to be coming out within the next couple of months. So, that's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Anyways, good night.